I get the privilege to introduce speaker, the speaker today. And, you know, the speaker is pretty dear to my heart. I mean, you know, uh, just, uh, yeah, I just think it's an honor that I get to do this. So I'm so excited for what we are embarking on this year with the theme of SOAR keeps coming to my mind. We are going to soar for more. Isn't that right? More of his presence. More of his glory. More of heaven on earth. Exactly right. Here amongst us and as we go out into our world and our community. So um, I was telling, uh, well, first service, I had prayed all week. Uh, I said, Lord, I'm going to introduce Tiffany and I want a special word from you. I know I'm her mom, and, and I can say mom things, but I want a word from you, Father. And, you know, he's so faithful. He did it. He did half of it when I got out of bed this morning and the other half on the way in the car in. I said, I gave you a week, Lord. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he's faithful. He's faithful. And this is what he said. He said, she wields the sword well. The sword of the Spirit, she wields the Word of God well, and because she takes it from a sheath that has been anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit and the love of God. Isn't that a beautiful word from him? Wow, the Lord is good. So, you are blessed. I'm so proud of you. As, uh, would you welcome our pastor here, pastor, and my beautiful, loving daughter, Tiffany Fruits. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm going to use that at home. Kids, sit down. <laughs> And they're like, whoa, boy, there she goes again. Um, no, thank you guys so much. And I, just, I do want to just say thank you so much to those of you who have been praying for me, those of you who have sent words of encouragement. Um, this is such a beautiful body of believers, and I am so thankful that the Lord has planted us here amongst you, and so thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have the privilege and honor of being married to Pastor Tim Fruits, who is the senior pastor, yes, some may say fruits, um, and I'm going to say Tim Fruits is in the house. Well, he's actually not in the house, but he is watching online. He said he would, so he does that to me every Sunday, so I'm going to take the opportunity to do it to him. Tim Fruits is in the house. Um, for those of you that don't know about our family or our story, um, I, my parents started the church, New Life Covenant Church, um, when I was in high school. I attended the church for two years, and then I graduated from high school and moved to Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, to attend Old Roberts University. Um, Tim, at the time, was going to Rama Bible College. We met at a church there while serving together, and we um, served there for eight years, and then we moved with a team of, a team of ten people to go out to Malibu, California, to help plan a church there. And everyone's like, oh, poor you, Malibu, California. It was hard, <laughs> but it was also beautiful. Um, but we were there for eight years, and then we felt like the Lord in 2014 was calling us back to Wichita to be a part of the New Life body, and we're so thankful for that. And we have a nine-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son who I get to hang out with every single day through homeschool. That is my ultimate surrender and big yes to the Lord, because that was not in my plan. But that's okay. He knows best, and he's reminding me every single day that his ways truly are better than ours. And we just need to give him our yes. Um, I do, as my mom mentioned, I do love the Word of God. I love it because I like to know, like, I need a filter for how to filter things. What do I hang my hat on? How do I, like, where do I measure this up in life? And I believe that the Word of God provides that for us, and it has to be our standard, our plumb line for how we approach everything. So I'm going to be using... A lot of a word. And so if you don't have, um, if you're not like, if any of you guys like Bible sword, like champions when you're growing up in church and like pull the Bible down, you look up the scripture really fast. Anybody? No. I, 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but if you're not super, super fast, just write down the reference, and you can look it back up later this week. I encourage you to go into the Word this week. Um, I believe that the Holy Spirit can speak to you personally. The Word is alive and active. And so get into the Word yourself. Don't just take what's said from the stage um, just as truth, but take it to the truth and make sure that that's dictating your theology and your beliefs. Um, okay, we're going to start with John 15, 5. Go ahead and open up there. They will be on the screen there for your convenience, but it's always really good just to open up your Bible and get in the Word if you have it with you. If you do have your Bible, if you turn there and then say here, once you're there. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, we'll read it together. I am the sprout, this is the Passion Translation. I am the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source. Fruitfulness will stream from within you, but when you live separated from me, you are powerless. I mean, honestly, we can just sit on that for a while. That's like, to me, that's like coming like a child. All we need to do is live in union with him and look to him as our source for everything. And from there, fruitfulness is going to stream from our life. Thank you, Jesus, for making it so easy. We have a tendency to complicate things and we want ourselves, our strength, our spouse, our boss, our financial status, whatever, to be our source. When really he's saying, I can be your source for everything. You just got to let it go. This is not my message. But, you guys, we, let's not overcomplicate things. Let's stay in union with him and look to him as our source for everything. Because that's where the fruitfulness comes. Okay, as we start off every Sunday, we're going to open up our arms the bigger you open up your arms, the more it means you love Jesus. So open them up real big, okay? We're going to say, Father, repeat after me, please. Father, you are welcome in this place. Jesus, we give you reign in this place. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, have your way. And put your hand on your heart. Make it personal. Gosh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you. Father, have your way in this place. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I declare your Lord over my life. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to come back to John 15, 5. I didn't just read that for kicks and giggles, but, well, nothing with the word is for kicks and giggles. It's all really powerful, but we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Um, if you're new or newer and you're just now joining us, um, we are currently, like my mom said, we are currently in a series called SOAR. Um, it's a word for the year. It's a vision for the year. We believe that God is calling New Life Covenant Church as a body to soar. And what that means for your own personal life is God is calling you to soar. That's not just for this year. It's for every day in life because of the price Jesus paid. But you are able to soar through life. No matter, matter what may come your way, you can soar. And so Tim spoke last week about pre-flight safety, and he was talking about getting strapped in, making sure you're sitting up straight. He mentioned taking your baggage and putting them under your, putting your baggage under your seat. You can't hold on to your baggage when you're going to soar. And then he had some other points too. I would encourage you to go check out the website, um, the YouTube page. His message is there, and you can get up to speed. He did not finish the pre-flight safety steps, though, and he's going to finish that next week. So right now we're par paused on the tarmac, waiting for him to come back. He's going to come back next week, don't worry. But while we're sitting here on the tarmac, I'm going to talk about in case of an emergency, okay? Has anyone ever been on a plane and there's been crazy turbulence? Like, there's like the shaking turbulence, you know, you're like, getting jostled all around. Then there's like the like dropping roller coaster turbulence where you're like, oh, and you hear like, usually you hear like some lady go, oh, <laughs> like, you feel it in your stomach. There's, and then there's the turbulence where I had this happen to the woman sitting next to me is like breathing into a bag and you're like, okay, what's going to happen here, Lord? Like turbulence was real. And then there's also the turbulence, and maybe it was that time where you're like, I am about to enter the pearly gates and see my Savior. Oh, my goodness, Lord. Like, this is it. I have. I'm like, I can't even say goodbye to my family because I don't have service. Oh, my God. 
know, like, um, but the turbulence has been so bad on certain planes that I've been on. And then there's also, I don't know if you guys have ever been on a plane, and the fog is so thick that you look out the window, and this has probably never happened to you because you don't have these kind of thoughts, but I looked out the window before and I thought, this is really thick. Like, how is the pilot driving this plane? And how are other planes not going to, like, they can't see us. Like, what if a plane, like, all of a sudden just shows up and then I just turn it off because that's vain imaginations. But I'm like, how are they flying this? Well, in preparation, I did a little bit of research about flying. And what I found is that, and many of you may already know this if you are a pilot or you're into airplanes, but airplanes, um, helicopters and planes have an instrument. And it's called an altimeter. I got it right this time. It's called an altimeter. And an altimeter measures your, um, it measures your, uh, oh my gosh, altitude. Sorry, there's lots of words here. I don't have any interest in flying. Um, <laughs> I'm learning. So you, they use their altimeter, and they know at what their elevation is. And that's how they're able to dictate whether to avoid other planes, the turbulence, all that kind of stuff. Altimeter and other instruments, of course, but the altimeter is very, very, very important. Case in point, um, tragic story of Kobe Bryant uh, three years ago, Southern California. He was flying in a helicopter. You guys might remember that story. If you don't, the um, pilot, so Southern California, fog comes in in the mornings, most mornings, and there's a mountain ridge. And so the fog gets stopped by the mountain ridge. This is like right where Tim and I lived. So I'm very familiar. The fog can get really, really thick until the sun's out for a while and the sun burns it off. But in the morning, it can be super thick. Well, Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the team they were with were in this helicopter and they were flying just a short distance and their altimeter was broken. They didn't know that the altimeter was broken. So the pilot was unable to know what elevation they were at and therefore tragically crashed into the mountains because he wasn't able to determine where he was at. Why am I going on this road? I promise there's a point to this. We're gonna go to the word. How do you jump to the word after Kobe Bryant? I'll show you. John 16, 33 in the Amplified Version says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you will have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy, for I have overcome the world. My quest is accomplished and my victory is abiding. I believe you could translate this for our vision, for the vision for the series that we're in. I think you could translate this. While you are soaring, you will encounter some turbulence and fog. But don't worry, he will get you through it. And it's even possible not to feel much of it. Okay? Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. I told you guys I love the word and we're going to spend a lot of time on the word. Um, Ephesians 2, 4 through 6, Passion Translation says, I'll give you a second if you want to turn it. Someone yell out here. Are you there? Awesome. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. Say, I am united into the very life of Christ. So good. He raised us up with Christ the exalted one. Say, I am raised up with Christ the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. If you're a believer, say, I have ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Say, I am seated with Christ. That's a big deal, you guys. Okay, how does all this tie together? I believe that we are, the word says, we are seated with him in heavenly places. 
we're going to have tri uh, tribulations, the word says. So we're going to have turbulence, and there's going to be fog as we're flying, okay? When we take off, we're going to get there. We're going to start soaring. And then at some point, if you're not in it right now, turbulence and fog will come. I don't mean to be pessimistic. It's in the word. We're going to have trials and tribulations, okay? It's going to come. But you need to pull out your altimeter to remind yourself the elevation that you're supposed to be flying at, okay? So if I don't know the elevation I'm supposed to be flying at, I'm going to get caught up in this turbulence and fog, and I'm going to start spinning. But when I can identify who he is as I'm in union with him and everything flows from there, and as I recognize that I'm seated in heavenly places, that he's given me his authority, and that I'm found in him, then I can rise above it. But I have to use my altimeter, okay? Number one is recognize your altitude. Recognize the altitude at which you're flying. But recognize, more importantly, in the spirit where he's positioned you, okay? Let me go to Colossians 2.15. This is a really, really good one. If you have your Bible, I would highly suggest you turn to this one because you're going to want to, like, mark it all up. Colossians 2.15, Passion Translation says, Then Jesus made a public spectacle. He's so awesome. Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers. This is after he died. He gave his life. He was a sacrifice for us. So then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all, say all, their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. I mean, guys, it says right here that the enemy has no power in the believer's life. Jesus, when he died and he rose again, he stripped the enemy of all power. So, therefore, we stand in Christ's victory. He hands us the victory. So we fight from a place of victory. We don't have to try to fight and strive for victory. We stand in the victory that he gives us. The only authority that the enemy has in our life is what we allow him to have. Okay? The only thing that the enemy has are lies. I like to say that he is a toothless, gummy poser. I mean, I just see him like, you're going to, oh my gosh, or how does it, it's like, who are you? Like, like, he has no power, but he is a very good liar, okay? And his whole goal is to get you to question who God is, your source, and where you're seated, who you are in him. Because if you can give up any of those things, and he can start to get you to stray over here, you're going to start giving him authority in your life. Okay? Good news, you can take it right back. But all he has is the authority that you give him. He has no power in your life. He has been defeated. So you're going through, there, you encounter this tribulation, you encounter this turmoil, this turbulence, and this fog. Number one, recognize your altitude. Pull out your altimeter, remind yourself, connect to your source. You can't do anything without him, so turn to him, connect with him, abide in him, and remind yourself of who you are in him. Number two, we have to shift our environment. Shift your elevation. The truth is that we are a spirit being with a physical body. It feels very real that we are a physical body with the spirit, because that's what we see and that's what we feel, that's what we know. But we are more spirit than we are physical. This world is more spirit than we, what we see in the natural. So when we approach life, when we navigate life, we have to approach it spiritually, okay? Um, our thoughts and our feelings are going to be very, very real, but we have to recognize that what spiritual truth 
is our real. Okay, this has to become our reality. Um, and how do we do that? One, I would say the best way to start to switch your environment to, sh to change your elevation is to put on praise music. You have got to start magnifying the Lord and reminding yourself, remind your mind, remind your emotions of who he is. We're going to want to, when things happen, we're going to want to just focus on the issue. We want to magn not magnify it. The more we think about it, the more we just, you know, like the whole like your role play and conversations and what's going to happen and oh my gosh. And then there's this snowball of thoughts and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die or whatever it may be or there's no hope, or this is going to happen, or whatever, or maybe your feelings, and it's the stress, it's the worry, it's the anxiety, it's the depression, it's the comparison, it's the strife, whatever it may be, that all feels so real, but we have to put on praise and start to magnifying him, giving him our focus, so that he's made bigger, because all of this stuff has to be submitted to him, okay? Um, Psalms 22.3 in Passion Translation says, Yet I know that you are most holy. It's indisputable. You are God enthroned, surrounded with songs, living among the shouts of your praise of your princely people. And another translation you might know better says, He inhabits the praises of his people. Okay? So when we are connected with him, we remind ourselves of who we are and who in him and who he is. We magnify him. And as we make him bigger, his presence comes. He inhabits our praises. And as his presence comes, his presence changes everything. And that's how we start to shift our elevation. Okay? Um, there's several biblical examples of how we see this happen. I'm not going to go into all of them. Many of them you've probably heard about. But one, which, I mean, just... Pause for a second and put yourself in these people's positions because, I mean, this would be crazy, okay? One, the Israelites, okay? God says, okay, I want you guys, like, yes, there's the enemy, and yes, they have swords and weapons and all this stuff, and they're right there. Okay, I want you guys to go out and worship first. And it's like, you know, oh, they want us to worship. I got my tambourine. You know, it's like, uh, they got swords, it's like, yeah, they said to worship. It's like, oh, wait, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a real thing. But as they worshiped, the Lord defeated and killed the enemy. Because power is in the praise, all right? We have to turn off our mind. I'm sure that some of those, those warriors are like, what are we doing? We're obeying. That's what we're doing. We're obeying him, and we're going to praise him, and there's power in our praise, and he's going to defeat the enemy for us as we keep our eyes focused on him and make him bigger, okay? Joshua, battle of Jericho. I can't imagine. Going around this city, <laughs> they're like, okay, we're going to take this city. Yep, just keep walking. Don't say a word. Yep, just keep walking. And it's on the seventh day. Like, that's a long time. Seven days. We're going to walk around seven times. Don't say a thing. It's like, Really? Like, where's your sword at? Like, what are we going to do next? Okay, just keep walking, you know? Just keep walking. Okay, seven ten time around. You're going to yell praises to God as loud as you can. And it's like, by faith, okay? By faith, we're going to shout praises to God. And what they do? They shouted, and God made the walls fall, okay? Nothing that they had to do. All they had to do was praise, and God took care of it. Third example, Paul and Silas, beaten to a pulp in Acts. Beaten. They're put in the, I said, the lowest dungeon where it's dark, it's murky, um, their feet are in stalks. And I can't imagine, like, you guys probably wouldn't do this if it were me. If I were beaten to a pulp for preaching the gospel, I mean, let's be real. I'd be like, really? I'm doing all this for you, and this is where I end up? God, like, where, where are you at? I'm doing my part. Where are you at? Right? It's easy to get into the turbulence of what we're feeling and what we see in the natural. But Paul and Silas didn't do that. They stay connected to the Lord and they said, we know who you are and we know you so well that you're our source. And we're going to magnify you in the situation. And so it says, and at midnight they gave praises to God and there was an earthquake. What? Their environment started to shift and shake literally. And their chains of, on their feet fell off. And all the prisoners free. The doors flew open, you guys, because of their praise. 
We do our part. We stay connected. We keep our eyes focused on him. He's our source for everything. We remind ourselves who we are. We don't give in to the feelings of what we think and what we feel. And we continue to magnify him and make him bigger, and he takes care of the rest. Um, story. When I was in college, um, like I told you, I went to Roberts University, and there were a few times that I came back home, I was navigating some tough stuff. I mean, I look back now and I'm like, oh, that wasn't so tough. <laughs> but it was very real at that time to me. And um, the feelings were very real, the thoughts were very real, and believing for finances and friendships and different things like that. And there were a couple times I came back um, home and my mom was working, my dad was working, and my siblings were out of the house by that point, or they were at school, I don't know. And um, and so I came home, and I would just, I was so hopeless, so overwhelmed in my feelings that I just would lay in bed, and I'd turn off the lights, make sure the door was shut. I didn't want to be bothered. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't, like, there was just, like, what am I going to do? I don't want to wake up and be all in my head, so I'm just going to stay in bed. And so I'm in bed. This happened more than once. Um, it's quiet in the house. There's no one there. And or between 12 and 1 o'clock, I hear these footsteps. And I'm like, oh, dad's home. Maybe he won't bother me. Can just maybe he'll just leave me in here, right? And I hear him walk past the door into his room. I'm like, sweet. I can just, he's not going to like, just leave me alone, please. And it would be quiet in the house. And then all of a sudden, this would happen. Every time. I know it. And you guys, that would blast through the house, and I would be like, are you kidding me? Do you have any empathy for what I'm going through right now? You want to blast that music? I am not feeling that right now. There was one time I even opened, I remember I even opened up the door and I'm like, turn that off! And he's standing there and he's like, I won't! I'm not going to! It was so loud, you guys. What was he doing? He was teaching me how to fight. He was teaching me how to shift my atmosphere. He wasn't going to wait till I got out of bed. He wasn't going to wait till I turned on the music. He was teaching me how to get up and get above and to shift my atmosphere. Did I feel like it? No. Did it start to change things? It got me out of bed. <laughs> I didn't feel like it. It got me out of bed, though. And parents, I want to encourage you. There's not a performance thing of like I have to do everything right because my kids are watching, but stay connected to him because they're watching how you navigate life. Okay, I still, I mean, I was married and had kids and every now and then I would get text messages of just a link to this song and I knew exactly what he was, he knew I was going through something and he'd send me this link and I'm like, that song's like 20 years old, dad, like come on. <laughs> but I knew what he was saying. He was saying, shift your atmosphere, get up above it, praise him, magnify him, make him bigger, remember who he is, and don't get stuck in your feelings and your thoughts, okay? Shift your atmosphere. Worship is warfare. Again, guys, we are spirit in a spiritual world, and we have to approach things spiritually, okay? Praise shifts things. Number two, we have to renew our mind. Philippians 4, 8 in the Passion Translation says, so keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. How many times do we like hypothetical situations? We like play things out in our head. Oh, I know how this is going to go. I know what they're going to say. I know what they really meant. Like, none of that is real. And how much time do we waste and that just breeds worry and stress. When we can just go to the word. That's actually truth, okay? So let's go back to the verse. All that is authentic and real, 
honorable and admirable. Your thoughts need to honor and respect yourself and others. Respect the price that God paid and remembering who the enemy really is. Beautiful and respectful, they need to be hope-filled. I love the quote that Steve Backlund says, and it says, if you, he says, if you have any thoughts that don't have hope to, attached to them, they're a lie. If you have any thoughts that don't have hope attached, they're a lie. Why? Because there's always hope in the price that God paid and the plans that he has. Merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. Praise him with your mind. Ephesians 6, 12 says, your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings. And I'm just going to put a pin in here right now because I believe this is very important. This is not about elevation, but yet it is. Your hand-to-hand combat, guys, is not between flesh and blood, okay? You're like, no, 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 no. They, they made me very mad. This is very flesh and blood. No, no, what they said is very real. What they didn't say is very real. Oh, that happened, and they did that to me. Let me pull back the curtain a little bit of what the enemy's doing here, okay? It's not them. The enemy's after your heart, okay? We have to do everything to preserve unity and the bond of peace. That's what the word says, okay? The proverb says, a house divided falls. If the enemy can bring in division in any way into your heart with relationships and your family in this house, if he can bring division, it says where there is strife, there's every evil work, okay? So we need to do our part to guard our hearts from strife and division, not letting the enemy have any piece of our heart, recognizing that Janelle's not my issue. Like, did you, you heard what she said. Yeah, but I'm supposed to walk in love. I'm supposed to forgive her. That's what I'm called to do. But if I let offense come in, the enemy has a hold of my heart. It has nothing to do with Janelle. That's not my message. But with every highest principality and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms, for they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so that you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you are destined for all things, and you will rise victorious. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as a protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert, and you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. I'm going to highlight this verse that says, put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. It is, you guys, we don't need to, like, have, the, if you have the whole Bible memorized, that's beautiful and that's powerful. But you don't need to to walk in triumph. You don't need to to get through seamlessly through turbulence, okay? All you need is one verse. One verse in the word has the power to change everything. And we have so many resources at hand. All you need to do is, like, go to Google and say, Bible verse for hope. Bible verse for provision. Bible verse for whatever it may be, whatever you're going through. And then more than one verse will come up, and then just ask the Holy Spirit to highlight something to you. Read through them and say, Lord, what are you speaking to me? What do I hold on to? Because that's the truth that you're going to need to strap around yourself to be able to stand in him and not get swayed over there, okay? We need some grit. And what I mean, can you guys say grit? I mean, like, a, I, mean like I got grit. Yeah, I got grit. Um, it's not great to, I'm gonna, I can fight this. I can do this on my own. I got my, my own ability. You will wear out if you try to do that. You'll make it for a little while probably, but you'll wear out. The grit comes in staying connected with him. The grit comes in resting and surrendering and trusting. No matter what may be going on in the natural over there, I trust you. I'm connected to you. I cannot do anything without you, Father. Help me to look to you as my source and everything. Find that one verse. Renew your mind, just like he told Joshua. Meditate on it day to night. Renew your mind with it. And when things come up, say, nope, I thank you, Father. 
I thank you that you're perfecting everything that concerns me. I thank you that my generations will praise you. I thank you that you have a hope and a future for me. I thank you, Father, that you've gone before me, that your favor goes before me. I thank you that your goodness and mercy follow me every day of my life. I thank you that you've provided every single thing that I need according to your glorious riches. There's so much in here, guys. All you need is one, and it's enough to stand and quiet the accuser. Love and worship him with your mind. Surrender your thoughts and stay abiding in him and meditate on his truth. In closing, I talked about how to change your elevation and through praise, which is huge, and through renewing your mind, which is vital. There's a lot of other ways. There's a lot of instruments, so to speak, out there. There's communion. There's... Um, gosh, tithing, there's uh, fasting, sozo ministry, being in community and asking for prayer. Like, there's all kinds of ways to get through the turbulence. I just focus on these two things. But rather than just saying, okay, you know what? Sometimes I see this, this image, and it's of a fighter, and they've got a sword and a gun and, like, all these different kinds of weapons around their belt. And they're just trying everything. There's a machine gun, and it's like, let's try this, and let's try this, and let's try this, and we're going to try this trying to do all the things, right? But that's just trying all the things in your own ability. That's putting your faith in your weapons when your faith needs to be in him. So we stay connected to him and we say, Lord, what would you have me do? He says, I want you to magnify. I'll magnify. I want you to fast. Great, I'll fast. Like whatever he leads and guides, but don't just put your faith in the things to get a result. Does that make sense? That's looking to your things. You got to look to him. We can't do anything without him. He's the one that hands us the victory. He's the one that has defeated the enemy. Those things are good. But he is the one that we put our faith in. As we said, John 15, 5. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. Guys, please if you get one thing out of this message, I made it so far. <laughs> Don't try to do it on your own. It might be really easy to try to go into autopilot. I know how to do this. I've done this before. Oh, this is easy. I was even good at it for a while, so I've got this. This is where we burn out. This is where we get tired. Stay over here, connected with him as your life source. If you need strength, he'll provide the strength. If you need peace, he'll provide the peace. He is peace. He is hope. He is joy. It's all in him. And he's put the kingdom beside of you. You have to stay in him. Please stay in union with him. If you're not currently going through turbulence, I would implore you to stay in union with him because turbulence will come and you'll have a lot better time doing all these things if you're coming from a position of being in union with him. It'll be a lot easier to get your bearings. And if you are going through turbulence right now, I implore you to surrender it all to him. Give it to him. Remind yourself where you're positioned. Keep standing in him, in his ability, and through faith and patience, it says, the word says, we inherit the promise. You just can't give up. That's it. Stay in him and don't give up. No matter what he may try to tell you, don't let go because you will receive the promise if you don't faint. There's two people that, in praying for you guys last night, there's two people that I just really wanted to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to. And one was... Um, I believe that there's people in here, and you're like, yes, I've been doing all these things, and I've been standing, and yes, there hasn't been fulfillment of my promise that I've seen yet, and I'm getting tired. I'm just really tired of standing. You haven't let go yet, but you're just weary and tired. And I believe later in John 15, it talks about how the Holy Spirit is the divine encourager, and I believe the divine encourager wants to come and encourage you and say, you're doing good. I got this. I'm working on your behalf. 
don't give up. I'm gonna pray for you in a second. Second people are the ones that you've been through some crazy turbulence. And it's as though I've seen you were so banged up. I saw you on the ground. And it was like, that all is great, but I can't even get up to abide in him. That sounds nice, but here I am. And actually, I tried that once. I believe the Lord, I was reading in Isaiah and Psalms, an author of Isaiah Psalms, it says, his right hand upholds you. You don't even have to stand up on your own because he wants to come and he wants to take his right hand and he wants to pull you up in his strength. And he wants to wrap your arm, his arms around you and bring healing and saying, I promise you can trust me. He can be trusted. He wants to bring healing and comfort. He wants to restore hope. So if you're one of those two people, I just ask you to put out your hands by faith. And we're going to give the Holy Spirit some room to minister. And I'm going to pray for you guys. But as I'm praying, I just ask you to listen for the Holy Spirit, what he wants to say. He knows the best words to say, the ones that are going to mean the most to you. He's going to speak truth to you. And he's going to bring healing and encouragement and hope. And we're just going to give him a moment to do that. We're going to give him some room, okay? So just stretch out your hands if that's you. Holy Spirit, we do give you permission. We do say have your way. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that even right now you're bringing healing. You're providing hope. You're speaking truth. You're wrapping your loving arms around these people. Thank you for mending wounds. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and close now, but we're also actually I'll ask the impact team to go ahead and come on up. Um, if you came in at all discouraged, thrown off, maybe you're going through turbulence right now, maybe you need some hope, partner with these people. Let them pray for you. Let them minister. Just receive. Receive truth. Receive an encouraging now word. We love to come alongside. We're called as the body to come alongside and lift each other's hands up, just like Aaron and her did for Moses. We can't do it on our own. We have to stay in him. But he's also provided a body of believers to support one another, to pray for one another. Okay? It's essential. So please don't leave if you need prayer. Come down here. These people know the word. They know truth. They know how to use their altimeter to get you to the right elevation. Thank you guys for coming. We're going to go ahead and stand. You take your hands of the people next to you. Lord bless you and keep you. May his face, his face shines upon you. His favor is upon you, and he gives you his peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. We say thank you. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you, healer. Thank you for your ever-present help in time of need. Thank you for leading and guiding us, Holy Spirit. And we just give you permission, Holy Spirit, to arrest us when our thoughts don't glorify you. Thank you for providing and reminding us of your truth. Thank you for inhabiting the praises of your people. And thank you, Jesus, 
for the price that you paid so that we can be in union with you and seated in heavenly places in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys.